Hello, it's Sarah. And today I'm going to do a tutorial on one of these little matchboxes. I had a request um, from Peru, all the way from Peru, um, Jolie Addiction. I guess Jolie might be her name. Um, for a tutorial, and so I figured I'd go ahead and do it. I'm, I'm making a few more of these um, into Christmas ornaments. So this is one that I did this morning, and I've gathered up all the uh, all the things I used to make this. So we're going to go ahead and repeat this exact thing. Um, the matchboxes I use are from the dollar store, our dollar stores. So I don't know if they have dollar stores in Peru, but they're. Uh, I'll measure it just so she can. Because, I mean, you could people make these, too. You can absolutely make these out of, um, and I'm doing this from the side. It's approximately 2 by 1 and 5 eighths size box, and it's a half inch wide. Oh, man, I better go up a little. All right, so I'm going to make a few adjustments as we go. Um, so that's what I'm working with. I'm going to just work with one of those. Uh... We're going to need Mod Podge or some type of a glue. I have Mod Podge. Um, it works fine for me, so that's what I'm going to use. Um, you're going to need some paper. I've already cut mine, but I I'm just using an old Christmas uh, paper pad that I had, Recollections, because I wanted to use um, these little cut-aparts from the... Um, this is the Graphic 45 uh, Nutcracker Suite. So I had this paper, and there were three little um, images here of this Nutcracker girl. So I'm going to put her on there. It's a different one. It's a little bit different. But there were three of them, and they fit nicely right on the top of this uh, matchbox. So that's what I'm using. You can use any image you want. You can use... Look, I'm going to make some more Christmas ones, and I have, like, these, these are um, buttons that I just cut the back off, but that fits nicely on there. So you can put whatever you want on here. This is just, I'm going to get you through the, the um, how I do it and how I uh, put mine together. So let's do that. All right, so we got, I got the paper and I pre-cut it. I'm going to give the measurements for that. This is to cover the, the uh, matchbox. And then you just gather some, um, like, types of uh, trims. Little trims work best. Thin. Like these size um, flat backs work really nice along the edge. I ran out of, I didn't have enough of the other one that I love, this one. I mean, actually, I could do use this on one, but I didn't have enough for two because I wanted it to make, be exactly the same as this. So I've gathered up all these trims. These are buttons again, snowflake buttons. Um, and then this is just a little thin or a little blue lace that I have. I've already cut that to the size I need. And um, probably uh, some beads to make your bead dangle. I'm going to go through all this with you. And when you see me do it, you're going to, um, it's, it's super easy. So you're going to be on your off and on your way to making one. All right. So I'm going to set this. Let's see. I'll keep this right here as I'm working. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to Mod Podge the paper to the uh, matchbox. So I'll take the inside out of that and grab my brush, a little bit of Mod Podge on that, and I just take and put it all over the outside of the box. Hope I'm in the shot. I'm going to come up a little. And then I'm going to also put it on the inside of the paper just all over it. I think it sticks better to when you when you put it on glue to glue, it sticks better. So I'm just going to center this kind of on the front. I didn't tell you the measurements yet. See, I'm a little off today. And then I'm going to wrap it around. Push down. See, without the drawer inside of it, you can get your fingers in there and really give it a good push. <clears throat> you can kind of even crease the edges 
because the box does move and so it's pliable that way for you to get a little crease there. I already inked my edges. You do not have to do that and you really don't see a lot of that um, because we're covering it with the laces and the different um, embellishments. So you don't really see that but look how easy. So look now we're already that's it. I'm going to put a little bit um, on the outside too. I just like to do that. I think it gives it a little more um, structure, I guess. It, it's it's when, the, when the Mod Podge dries, it kind of it makes it a little harder. I think that's what I'm trying to say. Like a little, um, it'll hold up better. And like if you get anything on it, it might be easier to get it off too because it has that slick surface. Gives it a little shine. So I just coat the whole entire thing. And I'm going to set that aside to dry while I show you, uh, and I'll turn it like that. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and do this too. While we're do while we're gluing, we're just going to glue. I've I've I'm going to tell you the measurements in a second, but I'll go ahead and do this. Um, and then while it's drying, I'll. Uh, so I'm just putting glue on the two longs inside sides and the bottom. So not the white part, that looks fine. That's kind of like got a little waxy coating to it and stuff, so it's kind of already nice. And this is practically a square, but not quite. So just make sure, I think the long way is how you want to do it. Uh, you know, it's not, I don't think it's the end of the world if it's, it's practically a square. When I tell you the measurements, you'll see what I mean. So let me see, I'm gonna eyeball it, yeah. Cause I want it to touch and then I kind of just eyeball it, squish it in there. I probably should have done like a a, a little fit, fitting first before I put the glue on, but it's okay, I got a wrinkle. See, nothing ever works when I do tutorial because I'm, I don't know, I'm trying to do it. Uh, let's see, we're already at seven minutes, so I gotta watch my time, but it's in there. And it doesn't, there's a little wrinkle right here, but it's not that bad. I may be able to kind of push it out. Now, if you're a stickler for things, see how there's like a little bit of the uh, cardboard showing there? You could take white paint or gesso and just do your edges. Let me say this one I think really came right up to the edge, but then you could ink it. Like I could just ink the edges. I already inked the paper. I think I'm just going to ink it. I'm going to take my little uh, applicator tool here and just put some ink there. Just darken it up a little. But it would look nice with just some kind of like white dauber or um, what is it? That Tim Holtz uh, white paint or something. Something easy that you could just do. I would just do it with my finger with some white paint, but it looks fine. I'm not worried about that. All right, so we have our box pretty much. That's it. I mean, that's how easy that was, you know? The, the little bit of red and blue is showing at the top. You see how it like, I mean, I don't even know if you can see that because it's such a smidgen, smidge. And we're gonna put lace right up to that so it won't even, it won't even show. All right, I'm gonna take this out and let it, just so, while it's drying, let it dry. Um, I want to uh, go ahead and show the measurements because I didn't, do that first, which I should have done. So you're going to cut your paper. Um, I'm going to go away and come back because we're at eight, nine minutes. All right. So you're going to cut your paper four and a half by two and one sixteenth. This is for the cover. And I'm going to show you why I say two and one sixteenth. I'm going to turn my camera because I want to get right in front of it. If you look at this box, it's a tiny bit over two. See that? It's it's not quite two and one eighth. It's two and one sixteenth. So I just try to cut it as close to two and one sixteenth. I don't even have a sixteenth measurement on my cutter. So I just eyeball it and see I got a smidge of room there. But like I said, we're going to put lace right over that. So this measurement going the long side is two and I would say one sixteenth. Even if you did it one eighth, 
then you put it on you could always cut away anything that was hanging over that might even be a better way to go all right so that's the length going up and down and then I just I think I did it by oh what did I do it by I put it on here <laughs> by four and a half so this is one and a half so you need one and a half two three four so four and a half so that it overlaps so you can see there's uh it overlaps from like here to here so the measure i'll put this in the description box but that's for the cover so two and about a sixteenth by four and a half and that'll cover the whole entire box and then for the inside it's two inches this way i'm pretty sure no i think that's the other one and fifteen sixteenths because look it's just a tad under two because two is about the width but if you want to put it in the box you need to be you know so I mean I'm a I put it really close to the edge but it doesn't have to be exact so and then for the across way two inches because this is about one and a quarter a quarter a quarter so one and three quarters to two and you can trim it down so you can do your own measurements I'll put these measurements in the description box though so you have them but you know use you're just going to measure um, your own box whatever box you're using because maybe you don't have these specific match boxes okay so this is pretty much dry I got to put this over to the side again which I don't like working like this it's very awkward I just hope everything's in the shot that's what I hope all right and the next thing I'm going to do is put um, my image on the front so let me grab that and I've already inked that up I just cut did I ink it now I might as well ink it I should have um, and you know what you really don't need to because it uh, I'm gonna put the trims right up against it so it's not that big a deal if you don't um, let me go ahead and I'm just using Mod Podge again put it over the inside of the picture and then I'm just going to put a little coating on the front of the matchbox and center it as best you can and you have a little wiggle room because it does move a little so I eyeball everything and just center it in there and you're good just give it a little pressure when you're working with uh, the box you can stick your fingers in there so get that on there it's a little uneven but that's okay I'll put my trims on evenly I like to give it a little coating along the edges just a thin coat of Mod Podge all right and there's that and I'm gonna let that dry and you know what while I'm gonna put this um, I don't have water but I have a wet wipe that I'm using what else do I want to do um, I want to talk about the beads a little bit I have uh, everything that you're going to need to make what I use, which is just uh, a bead dangle. Oh, you know what we have to do too? We have to add these. Might as well do that before I put my glue away. These are just the little front ends, and I have a measurement for that too. The little drawer ends are going to be one and a quarter by a quarter inch, or just over a quarter inch for the drawer ends. And this is, again, my preference because I like things to be like, have a little bit of room um, around it I'll show you what I mean so I'm gonna put a little glue on the end of the box and then a little bit of glue on the back of the paper center it as best you can so see what I mean like I just like to have it just a little bit of room around the edge like the white is showing kind of looks like a drawer like there's some tight and then I cover it with a little bit of Mod Podge just to give it some stability to really connect it to the piece so I'll do the same thing on the other side give it some pressure Try not to move it because I do that all the time because I'm rough. And then I just cover it with a little bit more Mod Podge. All right, now we're done. Thankfully, I saw those. So that's what we have so far. Our little box is ready to go. Let me wipe the glue off the mat. 
and I'll show you what um, I do for my beads. Now, this is just an option. I love it because I love beads and I love bling. So, of course, I mean, it goes hand in hand. If you can add some bling or some beads, um, we're going to connect these to our drawer. So, this is a tip that I got from Bonnie, Sassy Scrappers, and I love this. This is an awesome way to do it. It works. It holds. It's great. Um, and it looks good, too. So that's what I do. Now I have um, some supplies here. I'm going to move this paper out of the way. My trims I can get out of the way. And I'll show you what I have for beads. I pulled them out so I'd have it all ready to show you. <clears throat> Oopsie. My, my tripods. Okay. And hopefully this will all be in the shot. So... For the dangle, you're going to need, let me get everything um, organized here. I have two shorter head, uh, these are actually eye pins because they have that hole. We need that to make our dangles and everything. And then I have a big one for the dangle. This is for the dangle and this is actually for the connectors, for the little um, parts that go onto the drawer for the poles, drawer poles. So I need two of those and one of them for the dangle. And then some, some beads. Just any, you know, I'm kind of going to copy this. So to make this, I used a little uh, silver ball. I think that's, I'm going to do two bigger ones. This is actually not, okay. See my time. Start with a silver ball right at the bottom next to the uh, loop. And then I'm going to put a bead cap, my blue bead, which one? This one. Because this little one's just going to go up at the um, pole area. And then we're going to put a rondelle, a big rondelle. I'm copying this one just so I can do this quickly. I mean, because it takes me a minute to think when I'm creating these, uh, try and find a hole on this bead. There it is. <laughs> and then I use this big old um, bead cap on the top. And another one of those little uh, silver beads on the top. So that's my bead dangle, basically. And then I'm just going to hang um, a snowflake. I didn't have another one of these cute snowflakes. This has a bling inside of it. I don't know where I got that. But I just grabbed some of my Christmas decorations. I have this one, which is pretty cool. I think I ordered this from... Um, I know. I know where I ordered it, and it'll come to me. Uh, anyway... It'll come to me. I will say it when I remember. All right. I'm going to go away and come back because we're at nine minutes.